Tap the no button. Yeah, you look jacked. This All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ain't the ushers. Hello. 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 How are we? How are we? You guys hear us? Woo! Do you remember what that ad was? Cut. 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 We got to do that again. Where are we taking from? Yeah. for being here on this this nice Saturday. This is our 11th annual UNC Gold Reel it sure Gold is. Festival. Yes. <laughs> we'll be uh, hosting for this evening. Uh, I'm Ethan. My name is Addison, and if I sound like I gargled a thing of rocks, it's because I'm battling God's least favorite invention, pollen. Amen. <laughs> um, so shout out to all the filmmakers, um, everyone that made it in, dope, sick for you. We also, yeah. 
We also want a big shout out to our professor, Rodney. Professor Rodney Shrinkfellow. None of it would be possible if it wasn't for him. No, he, he made sure we were, we got this, sorry, I was about to say something. We, we got this underway and in wraps. Absolutely. Uh, just some house rules before we get started, because I know you've been waiting for a minute, so we just want to you know, jump into it. Um, there's, there's exits there, and up there, and right there. And then the bathroom is uh, by the elevator. So if you have to pee, there you go. <laughs> Um, and just for the people that came for the food, there will be food yeah. after the service. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. Um, and I think that's all for now. So please enjoy the first batch of films. Yeah. I said, that's quite the pleasant point. <laughs> anyway, about your hair. Whoa. Now that's hot. <sighs> so, do you have any hobbies? Actually, yeah. I like the sculpt. Oh, you like art? I, I'd love to show you some of my drawings. What, uh, what, what do you, what do you think? So, I hear you can make guys hard as stone. Look tonight? Yes. I get it. Dating's tough. Care to get anything off your chest? Oh, you didn't. I mean, I guess even monsters fear other monsters. Like, metaphorically? Uh, kinda. Well, you don't seem that scary to me. Want to talk about it more over coffee sometime? <laughs> Welcome back to 411 Talks. I'm Marco Bay. And I'm Francis Frost. Today we are still diving in for the Jennifer Bonin case. Yes, we unfortunately still have no news on our missing teen, Jennifer Bonin. Today marks three weeks since social media has gone wild over her case. Investigators still have no leads and Jennifer's father is asking for all the help that he can get. Jennifer's father has reached out to us asking to send a short message, just in case Jennifer is listening. Uh, uh hey, Jenny, if you're hearing this, please come home, please. Everyone is worried about you. Uh, if anyone has any information on the case at all, please contact me at uh, 704-555-7321. Um, if, if anybody has a fresh set of eyes on anything, please let me know. 
Well, that sure was touching. One thing that I will say about this case, though, is all these conspiracies, it, it just doesn't sit right with me. I mean, when it comes to suburbanites, I wouldn't trust a soul. Hey, Investigator Jones, uh, come on in. Mr. Bowman, we're going to be spending quite some time together. Please call me Charlotte. E yeah, okay. You want an apple toast? So what I'm thinking that we do is that we just go ahead and start looking into the park. I mean, I can't believe that the last investigators didn't go ahead and start looking in there. And I nah, we, we don't we, we don't need to go to the park. Um, I'm I'm sorry, but what direction do you suggest that I take this in? Then? I think it might be time to call it a night. Mr. Botnan, I mean, if there's something that. You know. Joshua. Sorry? First name basis, right? Um, yes. No, no, of course, Joshua. If if there's something that you're not mentioning about this case, I mean... Nah. I just want my Jenny back. Of course, of course. But how am I supposed to help you if you don't give me something to work with?
I've always been the person to seek out different adventures no matter what they are, whether it be uh, skydiving or wing walking, which sounds way cooler than it probably actually was. That all kind of came to a halt when I met Julian. Um, my priorities changed and I think I, at that time I was seeking something to fulfill a missing piece. So now we do adventures together. We had newly started dating and then I had some health issues come up. Different labs were off and then I had a lymph node pop up. That's when I got my first biopsy and that's when the pathologist told me that it was Hodgkin's lymphoma. The hardest part was telling those around me and those closest to me what journey was about to happen. I thought everyone would just break down and cry and I'd have to be that strong person and just tell them everything's going to be okay, but that was not the case. Um, Julian was definitely a rock. Um, he, he didn't shed a tear, which I still... Um, upset about but whatever just from the beginning he said we're gonna get through this um, I'll be here with you through every step of the way and that was very encouraging to me the whole time like he was always there always supportive um, and I th thought you know me going bald looking like an alien gaining 30 pounds and what I used to weigh never changed how he felt about me or what he said to me. Um, always called me the most beautiful woman in the world. When I had no eyebrows, no eyelashes, no hair, and I was as pale as a cloud. Um, I think before all the cancer stuff, we were still just learning about each other. In the beginning, it's all superficial. You don't really know that much about each other, but I think that kind of solidified our relationship and we were able to learn more about each other. He saw me at my worst, I saw him at his best, um, but he was there for my lowest point and I think um, that strengthened our relationship because I knew no matter what and no matter what came our way, I think we could overcome it together. Which, I mean, if you leave somebody during their cancer journey, it doesn't speak highly of you, so he at least had to stick around through that. <laughs> um, I think the main thing that helped me overcome was definitely my faith in my church family, which my blood family and Julian are included in, but um, relying on the Lord and other people's prayers is really what got me through. Um, anytime I'd try to have a bad day or just try to feel sorry for myself, someone would text me, send me a scripture, or I would just think randomly of a scripture and that's really weird because my memory is really bad and I don't memorize scripture so to have a mem like a specific scripture come to mind I definitely think it wasn't me um, I think it was a higher power and I could definitely feel the love and prayers like no one if you've not been in that situation you don't know and if you don't have that faith you wouldn't understand but it's a overwhelming and peace beyond understanding which is in scripture which I had never experienced until then um, which definitely helps solidify my faith um, I think the journey definitely helped fast forward our relationship um, as it would usually take me a year or two years to get comfortable with someone Julian saw my worst really quickly so I think that it strengthened us faster and we were able to come closer and realize sooner that we wanted to spend forever with each other. So at the end of my um, treatment, as a celebration, we went to France, which is where his family is from. And um, I was able to meet his second favorite person, Mami Cicel. Um, but also that's where he chose to propose. And um, a month before we got married, I was 100% cured. And so I had another celebration with Julian, our marriage. <laughs>
Uh, that'll be 451 uh, cash card. Card. It's declined. Sorry, sir. Uh, on. I'll be right back. Can you just hang one of those for me? Give me the apples. Yeah, just take them. Howdy, this is Clint from Rune Toot News. Today, I'm in front of Ram Ranch Market where a couple hours ago, a robbery occurred. Holy shit! <laughs> and I'm here with the cashier who bravely stood up against the robber. So, Mr. Cashier, is there anything you can tell us about the robber? Yeah, he was terrifying. At first, he just came in as some regular guy looking to buy a bunch of apples. But after his car declined, he left and came back dressed as a cowboy and pulled a gun on me. Wow, that's horrible. I, I wouldn't trust anybody who pulled a gun over apples. Yeah, me neither, but my mom told me never to act in fear, so I just leapt over the counter and started wailing on him. That guy was stumbling out of there, dropping apples left and right. Actually, now that I think about it, he dropped a lot more than just apples. There was a a lot of stuff, like his wallet. All right, thank you so much, cashier, for speaking to us. This has been Patrick from Rootin' Tootin' News. Back to you, Patrick. You Jack Appleseed? Yeah, that's me. I'm investigator Charlie Jones. I occasionally go by Charles. I've been researching, I've been looking into some Apple robberies. Do you happen to know anything about it? The fuck is an Apple? I'll tell you what a fucking Apple is. Sigma. He hit my dick. Uh, I guess I really broke his back down the, the fucking hill.
From the timeline when niggas don't die, the skyline just takes back our fables. Reporting to you live, sitting at Kerry May's kitchen table with my right hand placed on rifle, left hand just run by some fables. To a child who don't yet understand, I pray one day she able from the table where. Doing hair is still a crusade, and what's the point when they pop? Little boy wears fingers, stick his pomade. I seen it. Should've took a route less scenic, but when you don't see sun often, won't this something got you fiending? I'm a live from my mama's kitchen table where she pulls heartbreak to her chest and folds up cards to keep less stable. With a currency for meals is often the laughter that's exchanged in. I ain't seen you in a minute, so sorry, tears were in your frame. I line different, nothing missing. You ain't called, but we ain't.
If you ask anyone, they'll probably tell you how better their the life is. is. I mean, you know exactly what's going to happen no tomorrow. You know exactly what's going to happen next week, next month. I guess for me, all that changed. A winding cipher has been found in the house of a missing victim. Experts decoded this message as she looked at it now she is here with me. Police have been sending Amber Alerts as well as setting curfews and advise residents to not leave the house after dark until the suspect. Hello? 
Yo. Yo, who is this? I don't know who you are. I just want to know how you found my email. That's it. Emails? You mean the one that serves? Look, man, I swear I didn't see anything. I, I went right to my house. That's it. I'm not going to tell anybody about this, I promise. <laughs> What do you want from me, man? Like, do you want money? I'll give you money. Hey, you're that guy, right? That guy they've been talking about in the news. The one that leaves the messages. I cracked the message. Just tell me what you want, man. What do you mean by that? Listen. If I wanted to, I could go to the police station right now and report your ass. You know that, right? I'm literally in the car right now. The police station is what? Two minutes away? How about I go there and tell them what you've been doing, huh? Hello? What do you mean by that? complaining about certainty but now <laughs> I'll take certainty any day
you know. I mean, doesn't bother you at all? Not really. It's like a smoke detector or a bridge running. Why noise? last week. Mr. Ronnie! My man. What's going on, Jacob? How you doing, Mr. Ronnie? I'm doing all right. Everything going good with you and your family? Hey, the family's doing well, my man. That's great. You know, I'm truly blessed to be around the ones I love. Absolutely. That's a huge blessing. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. You know a saying that my grandfather used to tell me? Was real love is one of the greatest gifts that a man could ever get. Mm. Of course, I didn't learn it until a couple heartbreaks later. <laughs> Grandfather's and great advice, I was going hand in hand. Hey, uh, I'm heading out to this party, so I gotta dip out, but I'll see you around. 
Mr. Brownie? Of course, anytime, Jacob, man. Go have fun at the party. We'll speak again soon. For sure. All right. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday, Gabby. It's your birthday. It's party time, girl. Come on. Hey. Hey, Jacob. Um, the party doesn't start till later. I didn't think you'd be coming so early. He cheat on you. Okay. Well, I know he did something to you because you're out here crying, so... Look, Gabby, He I... forgot my birthday. Sorry to hear that. You know, after three years, I really thought he would remember this time. Yeah. You don't deserve that. But I love him, and he's all I have. <laughs> you kidding me right now? Yo, you got a house full of people back there who love you. Not a single one of them forgot it's your birthday either. Thank you, Jacob. Good thing none of them are out here to see me cry. Look, I came out here early to help set up, but you want to take a walk? Come on. I'm just saying, nobody compares to Michael Jackson. No. I see a lot of debates today. No. A lot of people comparing Michael Jackson and a Taylor Swift is better. Taylor no. Swift. No, 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 no. Right. See, because he would do his thing back then, right? Yeah. He'd get up on the stage, he had the it's shiny shoes and everything, the one glove, the one glove. He'd start to feel like this. Hey, everybody, I'm Michael Jackson, y'all. He took off his jacket like this. And then he'd say, you know, uh, take that jacket off. And he'd do his thing right here, this thing right here. Get your ass off, Mark. He'd say, <laughs> and this is Thriller, Thriller of the Night. Come on, girls, come on. Look at that. <laughs> what, what, I came with the long leg? What? Uh, I don't know. Do it again. Oh, I'm not doing that shit again. What are you talking about? I just did it. Ah, uh, come on, girl. Hey, um, I wrote this poem the other day. You, uh, trying to hear it? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> if you truly love someone, do not decorate their eyes with tears, their ears with lies, and their heart with wounds that you cannot heal. What is true love to those that hurt you? Do you mean something to them when all they do is bring you pain? The best love we can receive is not the love we think we want, but will always be the love that we need. Many times we realize it too late and the one we need begins to leave, making us stuck with the abuse that we think is the love, but is instead the scars that we see. Oh, Jakey, that poem was cute. <laughs> Appreciate it. I uh, wrote it by watching you and Brock. Brock doesn't lie to me. Yeah, he does. Remember that time you guys were on a date and uh, he said he was going to be late because he was picking up some, some Chick-fil-A? Yeah? Yeah, it was Sunday. Okay, well that was the only time. That was not the only time, Gabby. He constantly treats you like shit. Yeah, but he treats me like that. <sighs> That's not funny. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to make light of the situation. I've always admired that about you, you know? What? You could always find the, the light in a dark room. What does that even mean? I don't know, like, 
you could always find the good in things. You always know how to make things better. You made my life better. Shut up with your poems. <laughs> you don't like my poems? Uh, of course you don't. Hey, um, Jakey, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Yeah, ask me anything. Why are you always here for me? Like, do you like listening to me complain about stupid boys all of the time? I'm here for you because you've been there for me even when you didn't realize I needed it. Well, you've always been good to me regardless of the situation. Like, you stay and listen to me complain about stupid boys. Oh, so, so you agree? Agree with what? You agree that Brock is stupid. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean him. <laughs> Even though he does do a lot of dumb things. Gabby, I don't know if you know, but his name is Brock. Every nigga named Brock is stupid. <laughs> Wait, don't you like Brock Hampton? Okay. I don't know where to be shocked or surprised that you remember my favorite group. I remember because we were young and weren't supposed to be watching adults. Swim. Listen, listen. The Venture Brothers, the Boondocks, essentials back then, okay? <laughs> Absolutely true. But can you please give me a serious explanation? Why are you always here for me when I'm never there for you? You say that, but, um,. I remember a time when you were the only person I talked to. You were the only person I talked to and nobody wanted to be around me. I mean, I was a new kid in a different state. Man, your parents had shown me the entire city, told me to look after you. There was even a time I wanted to be more than friends with you. You did? Yeah. But I had to realize that you were never gonna give me the chance, so you know, that was crazy, even though I wrote poems about you every other day. Wait, so you like me? I did. But I had to. I had to get off that. Now I realized you were stuck on that, that fucking Brock hype train. <laughs> okay, so do you think I'm dumb for giving him another chance? No, Gabby, no. I think like a lot of girls, like a lot of people, you've been deceived. I mean, we've all been deceived into believing that that lie, that fantasy of finding that good person out there for us. Well, I thought he was mine. <laughs> hey, ain't no way you thought a nigga named Brock was the person for you. <laughs> okay, he can't choose his name. Hey, that's true, that's true. But you, you can choose the person you want to be with. Why, why didn't you choose me? I was right there in front of you the whole time. Um, this isn't a good excuse, but I guess it's true when they say hurt people hurt people. And I guess that I've been hurt so many times that I didn't realize you were right in front of me too. Yeah. Yeah, I was. All that's over now, though. Got you a present for your birthday, though. Really? I never forget your birthday, Gabby. Happy birthday to you. Hey, um, uh, stay safe, all right? Hope you enjoy your party. I'll see you around. Jacob, you're not staying for the party? Jacob! Jacob! Nice guys, don't finish last. They don't even get to finish the race.
Well, 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 if it ain't Babby Slick. I always <laughs> Come on. What do you want from me? You got your money. I didn't bring you in for the money. Mick. I don't don't make me slick. Stop it here. Tell me you've been talking with the files. Listen, I don't know what he's been telling you, but I promise you I would never- Where were you last night? Huh? I was home with my wife last night, Mickey. Funny thing is, Slick, I was at home with your wife last night. You son of a- Listen here, Slick, you know I can always slip out a rat. And believe me, pal, I could smell you getting off the elevator. <laughs> Christmas, you filthy animal. And I had been. Christmas Eve, 1959. As the hustle and bustle of the holiday season came to a close, I walked the streets alone. Nothing new for me. I had a steady gig working for a notorious mob boss named Mickey Midas. Mickey's the last person you'd want to see on Christmas Eve. Yet there I was at his doorstep, completely unaware of the horrors to come. Look what the cat dragged in. New York's dumbest shyster. What is it? What do you think, you mouth-breathing buffoon? I got a job for you. You and that good-for-nothing partner of yours. Mickey, it's Christmas Eve. I don't care if it's Christmas Eve, Groundhog Day, or Chinese New Year. You work for me. So keep your traps shut. Well, Dub Nuts finally decided to show. Hey, Mick. Glad you can make time for us in that busy schedule of yours, you beatnik. Sorry, I was with the kids. Oh yeah? Well, I don't want to hear diddly squat about them rugrat rascals, you low now, no good, bone-headed clown. So what's the job? You know that pizza place on 25th and Broadway? Oh, betters? Yeah. The guy that owns that joint owes me a lot of money. And let's just say, I've ran out of patience. I want you to go to his house. If he ain't got the money, you want us to kill Vinny? Nah, I want you to bring him some milk and cookies, maybe sing him a Christmas song. And of course I want you to kill him, you thick witted morons. Now make like a tree and get out of here. 
scram. Neither of us said a word the whole way there. All I could think about was the fact that I was about to take away a husband the same way my wife was taken from me. But we didn't have a choice. Better him than us. What are you two doing here? What are you doing? You know what we're here for. Just give us the money. I take it he didn't have the money. Tony's dead. Is that so? I'm done, Mickey. I quit. You can't quit. Well, go ahead then, you cocky bastard. Shoot me. That's what I thought. When your old man got whacked, who took you in, huh? Without me, you wouldn't have two pennies to rub together. You're a loser. You're scum. You ain't going nowhere. Now get on, kid. Santa's coming. I had nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. I was a sitting duck. God, hey, guys, you gotta listen to me. Listen! Oh, no! Oh! right there. So it comes to this, huh? You should have shot me when you had the chance. Now I'm gonna gun you down just like that wife of yours. What did you say? I would say it's nothing personal, but truth be told, I couldn't stand that tramp. She knew too much. 
That's why I told you not to get involved with that big mouth bimbo. <laughs> And uh, the Independent Picture House has been so lovely to give us um, some uh, prizes to put in these gift bags, as well as my parents. Shout out to them. Um, yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> um, so we'd like to welcome the executive director of the Independent Picture House, Mr. Brad Ritter, to say a few words. Yeah. It's sweaty, I'm sorry. That's all right. Hey everyone. Uh, wow, those were great films, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. Can't wait for uh, part two. So, uh, again, I'm Brad Ritter. I'm the executive uh, director of Independent Picture House. Uh, last year, we had the honor of hosting this film festival, and I think Rodney and I quickly realized that you guys, we out, you guys outgrew our largest auditorium, so it's awesome to see this big crowd here today. So thank you for coming out and supporting local independent film. For those of you who are not familiar with Independent Picture House, we are a local nonprofit. We show foreign independent um, art house films. We do not show Marvel movies. We don't dislike Marvel movies, but that's just not what we do. So, um, if you're, uh, there's a lot of students here. We do offer free student memberships. Uh, you will need to go to the actual cinema, present your ID, and you get a free one-year membership. So, um, please come out, check us out. From campus, if you take the blue line, we are only 12 minutes away. We're at the Sugar Creek stop. So uh, encourage everyone to take the blue line and come out and check us out. And again, we're super excited to be part of this great festival. Thank you.
Cool. All right. I got, I got some trivia questions. The way this is going to work, uh, I'll ask the question. If you guys think you know the answer, raise your hand. And then I, there's, like, there's a multiple choice. Uh, and he'll run the, uh, the mic out to you, and, and you answer it. And if you get it right, you get, a, you get a little prize. Okay. Question, oh, what? Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. Question number one. From uh, what film is the character Rakakuni from? Yeah, go run it out, go run it out. Uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. Yeah. yeah. Dope. All right, second question. And I, I don't want judgment from this statement, but it's one, it's one of my favorite movies. Um, uh, Saltburn. Uh, who, who directed Saltburn? Yeah, yeah. Emerald Fennel. Yeah. yeah. All right. What film won the Oscar for Best Picture in 2020? Go get him. Oh, okay. Wait. Disclaimer. Do you mean a, do you mean won the film at the 2020 awards or won the film a film that came out in 2020 and won uh it did not come out in 2020 okay then parasite yeah <laughs> cool uh, i was told to make these difficult and i feel like this one maybe is is more difficult i don't know um what was the nickname given to the shark animatronic on the set of jaws okay. Booth. Yes. Go. Okay. In the hit movie Shrek, what breakfast food does Donkey want to make with Shrek? Go get him. Who is it? Uh, someone. Waffles? Yes. There you go. Hey. All right, we got two more. Two more. All right. Uh, what was the first Stephen King novel to be adapted into a film? Go get him. Carrie? Yes. All right, we got one more. Uh, what was the first movie to show a toilet flushing in it? Sick. Yeah. What is Psycho? Correct. <laughs> Thank you guys for playing. The next block of films will start very shortly. Let's just say, hey, 
the black film's in, please stay a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trivia Trivia went well. Yeah. I didn't get to take a fall. I know. We encourage audience participation. So if you want to shout stuff at us, go ahead. Oh, we got, we, we heard you on that. Okay. Who's ready? I don't know. I think we're going to give one more now. Okay. Ben. 
kidding. Okay, okay. Yeah, you Um, yeah, if we're about to get back into it. Ready? Uh, attention, attention. If you could calm down. What's up? How are we all doing? How was that first batch of films, guys? Sick. Yeah, I agree. We're going to be honest. We dressed up for a reason. Yeah. Prince, can you cue the music? If you don't laugh at this, bro, and you don't participate, you'll be so mad. Heck yeah. All right. <laughs> Time for the second round of films, fellas. <laughs> Woo! My name is Anna Kenner. I'm a faculty member at the Department of Art and Art History. I was born and raised in Poland. And when I was a teenager, my family moved to the United States. I lived outside of Chicago. That's where I went to college. And eventually, I ended up in Charlotte, North Carolina. When I think about it, I remember being six years old and imagining myself being an artist. But then that was as reliable as me wanting to be a firefighter and a ballerina at the same time. Um, so it was just really about seeing people do different things. In my last semester of my last year, uh, as an undergrad, I took a figure drawing class for fun. And, <laughs> and that just changed everything. Using my hands and being creative is something that I was really missing in my life. And I stumbled upon printmaking by walking into a studio and just feeling again in my gut that, oh, this is something that I w always wanted to try just because of what it looked like. And then I had an opportunity to teach when I was in graduate school. And that was an incredible experience. I never imagined myself as a teacher. <laughs> Ever. Um, and then I discovered that I really, really loved it, that I was really good at making these connections in the classroom, and that I found myself very passionate about what I loved, and then being able to share it with other people. with a chronic condition of endometriosis. And I was invited to have a show in Gaston College. The body of work that I'm preparing for it, it's something that I've been exploring for a while. I'm just creating work that is a little bit more experimental in terms of surfaces I'm working on. I've been making this work on paper and something was missing the whole time. It's a series of wood blocks that were hand carved. And when I started Printing these blocks on fabric, I've discovered that there was this connection to the material that felt really um, familiar and tactile. But there's also this 
connection to it as a material of domestic use. And it's like, again, that brought me back to thinking of our spaces and traditions and gender roles. If you have a female body, you're conditioned from a very young age to accept the fact that you are going to have a life of pain. No one wants to look at it, no one wants to talk about it. So making this work so loud and so confrontational and also beautiful, the beauty of these marks, and it's the beauty of, and complexity of this body. And uh, the kind of staining, right, the kind of redness that um, connects to the blood and connects to the flesh, hanging it out there for everyone to see. I want people to be confronted by how difficult it is, which may be uncomfortable and shocking. It's, it's very physical. The process of printing is really physical. That is incredibly important um, because the process of making is a release. It's also a process of destruction because you permanently damage the surface from which you're printing. We can, we can all share the experience of pain. And I think most people can share the experience of not understanding why they're in pain. So <laughs> it's about that too, how overwhelming this experience is. I've been, I've been making work about my body for pretty much the whole time I, I've been making work. Guess what? What's up? I got the internship. Are you serious? Dude, that's incredible. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, wh what are we what are we doing today? I was thinking that we could go to the bookstore. I didn't know there's a bookstore in town. What? I can't believe you haven't heard of it. It's the best. It's not like I can't just get anything on my phone. You don't get it. Books are so much better when you can actually hold them. I guess, yeah. Maybe that's what you've been missing all your life. Yeah, I've just been missing out on Sally Rooney my whole life. Everyone has been missing Sally Rooney. This place was awesome. I, I, I mean, I really didn't expect to find Dune in there, but... Yeah, that place is the best. I'm definitely going to miss it when I go abroad. Yeah. yeah. So are you, uh, are you all packed up? Yeah, I just finished last night. That's good. That's good. Um, so I better head out. I promised my family I'd get dinner with them before I go. Well, this, was, this was really nice. It's, it's great to see well, you. You're not getting rid of me that easily. You're going to that party with me tonight? What, what party? It was in a summer party. You're coming with me. You know I'm not that huge into parties. Pick me up at eight. We'll go together. It'll be fun. 
All right. All right. Yeah, fine. Sorry to have kept you waiting. I got stuck in traffic. Oh, no worries. You haven't been here too long. Oh, no, no, not at all. It's only been a couple minutes. Um, how have you been? I know it's been ages since we last talked, but I've been busy with finals and goodbyes, but it's good to be home. Yeah, no, I bet. Things have things have been good. I got a job down at the, down at the bookstore. No way, that's so cool. I haven't thought about that place in forever. How is it? It's going. Uh, the past two months, sales really haven't been that great, but Mike is confident that we'll be able to get back on our feet, so. I'm sure it will. That place shines here. It did. <laughs> well, have you thought about school at all? Are you going to get out of here and go to college somewhere? Um, to be honest, I haven't really given it much thought. Uh, I, mean, I don't really know what I would do. You just have to get out of here, Kalem, and see the world. This place is all right and all, but... There's just so much out there. Um, I saw there was a new restaurant in town. Have you been? Is it nice? Oh, uh, yeah, no, that place is the, the new one right down the street. It's great. Uh, I was actually thinking later this week, if, if you're free, we could maybe go grab dinner. Um, yeah, that could be fun. I just, I don't know. I might not be able to. I'm leaving in a couple days, so. Oh, I mean, that's fine. We can just reschedule for whenever you get back. Is, is everything okay? I'm not coming back. Oh, right. where, where are you going? I'm going back to Amsterdam. I thought, I thought we were... I'm sorry, that's just how it is. Amsterdam is where my friends and my career is. I need to be there. I thought we were... I'm sorry, Kaylin, but you just shouldn't have presumed that we were just going to fall in line like we used to. That was ages ago. No, you're right. You're right. I don't know what I was thinking. It's okay. I just... What we had was great. That's just... It's not the same anymore. Um, well, I promised my sister I'd take her to see the movies, so... Yeah, I mean, I have work in a little bit, so... But it was really good to see you. Yeah, it was good seeing you, too.
thinking about the rain and how beautiful it is, it's freeing. Do you like the rain, Doctor? We all let go of rain sometimes. But, Nick, we're not here to talk about your likes and dislikes. We're here to talk about your feelings since... Since Nate died. Yeah, since Nate died. You, know, you haven't said anything about the situation since you got here. Has it ever crossed your mind that I just honestly don't want to talk about my husband's death? I mean, I come here day after day, but I mean, I'm, I'm grieving and I don't want to talk about it. Honestly, no. What? I mean, you talk about how much you loathed him before his death. Feelings can change. With untimely death, maybe, but we need to get to the root of your problems so we can know exactly what's going on so we can help you process these feelings. Hey, hon. Sorry that I'm late. We had this big pitch that we had to get straightened. Hey. You know, it would be nice if you were a little more present. That's fantastic, babe. I'm so glad about the pitch. Is there something that we need to talk about? No. Everything's fine. Everything's always fine. Are you okay? I thought that you were okay again. <laughs> and that... Everything was fine until it was just... Till what, Nick? Until it all fades. The fake smiles, the laugh, the excitement. It's all fake. You know, if you just tried to I talk did to me... The first three months after we got married, I tried to like everything that you liked and to be this supportive trophy wife for you, but I just can't do this anymore. Well, what are you saying? I don't know. I think I just need a minute. So maybe could you just go right now? You, are you serious? Absolutely not. We're married and like we vowed to work our shit out. So I let's work our shit out. Work it out. Not right now. So just I'm gonna ask you again. Can you please go? But before you go, the bill's gonna be coming in soon. It was the last time I saw him. Started some fake argument just to get him out of my vicinity or something. Why? You know damn well why. It was never about love. Maybe in the beginning there was potential, but never about love. Nikki, you're saying that you never loved him? No. I never loved him. I was struggling and he was just there. I saw an opportunity and I took it. I made a commitment to him out of necessity, not some misguided Disney love. And I left way better than I started. And his estate? I'm assuming everything is... Right. Everything. From the house to the cars. It's all mine. So, take no offense to this, but from my angle, in hindsight, you should be jumping with joy right now. I mean, you have everything you could possibly want, but instead, you're hurting over him. And you should be happy because you never loved him. And it was just about his assets. Is that correct? Right. I never loved him. Hello? Hi, Nikki, it's Jewel. Oh, um, hey, Jewel, is there something I can help you with? No, um, uh, it's just... It's Nate. He's gone. Nate's gone? Like, as in, what, gone from the city? No, Nikki. By gone, I mean dead. They said it was a hydroplane accident, but he was gone before the paramedics could even arrive. Nikki? You still there? Uh, um, yeah, sorry. I, um, I I'll call you back later.
actually think I loved him. From his goofy smile to how courteous he was of me, even though I almost never showed him the same regard. I mean, he was the first person to truly treat me like a fully capable person. He always kept it straight with me when no one else did, and he cherished me. Every part of me, and he truly loved me. I mean, yeah, like, he had his benefits when it came to the wealth and giving me financial freedom, but even through all the shit that I put him through, he still loved me unconditionally and with everything he had. He was selfless when I was selfish. He honestly loved me, cared for me. I miss him. Can you believe that, Doc? spent all this time saying how much I didn't want to be with him, but it was all falsified. I mean, from a young age, I was taught that all people will do is tear you down to the smallest atom of your being, and it's up to you, and only you, to build yourself back up. I was never taught that people could come in your life and change it in a small but meaningful way. Until Nate. Nate helped me unlock a part of myself that I thought was camouflaged under a stubborn sense of toxic, selfish determination to make things go my way. He was the only person who ever made me feel like I was worth a damn. I mean, like I was worthy enough to deserve love. He made me feel like I was on top of the world and when we were together, he, he picked me up and never tore me down. He wanted to see me succeed. I mean, just as much as he wanted to succeed himself. Even when I was lying to myself. All these years, continuously telling myself that I didn't love him and that I never would. <laughs> I think that at the end of the day, it was just, I loved him through this fucked up turmoil of a marriage that we have. I think that I just loved him. <laughs> In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Spirit of God, you have to go to the heaven until my family is free.
Hey, what's up? Oh yeah, I'm on my way. John! I've let you do this for way too long. I am done with your bullshit. I, 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 look, just, just let me finish the album and everything will be fine. All right, I, I, I've had some great ideas. Johnny, I, you haven't even come close to writing a song, much less a record. I told you to have me a record by the end of the week. I've waited for too long and I can't wait for any more. All right, you forced my hand. I mean, I, come on, I've, I've done a lot for this label, like... I, it's, Which is why I even waited, okay? But you know what? You're broke, you haven't written shit, you live on your friend's house, and you can't stay on that couch for life, all right? I can't keep waiting, John. I got other artists that require my attention instead of you. But, but, I mean, I said you're done. Now get the fuck out. How the fuck did you do this, Grandpa? I have to, I have to repeat the phrase that sealed the demon away. The demon will then uh, take him, take over him who wronged me last. Look, he, he was nuts, but that, at least he left me instructions. I, I know, I know. Look, yeah, one, one day is, one day nobody next a star. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I... Well, I, I haven't got much else to do. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm running out of options. Yeah, I know. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you with, uh, some other time. All right. All right. Yeah. Bye. And el nombre del padre, del hijo y del espíritu santo. Con mi muerte te encarcelo en el infierno hasta que mi uh, familia uh, de, de libre. I, I guess you're a nut job, Grandpa. Well, ain't this a nice surprise? Zach? You fire me and you come here to mock me? How the hell did you even find me? So that's this meat sack thing. Sadly, I don't get to choose the body. It has to be someone you hate. But I gotta say, you couldn't hate someone with a, like a bodybuilder? Maybe without a fucking broken finger? What the hell are you talking about? Straight to it, huh? All right, uh, foreplay's my favorite part, but if you wanna go straight to the point, that's completely fine, I like it. My name's Salazar, I'm a demon, you summoned me. Uh, about a century ago, I'm the one that made a deal with your grandfather, made him a star. Now I'm back, so if you wanna make a deal, are you ready to pay the price? Yes, I'm, I'm ready. I, I have nothing left. Uh, everyone says the same thing until payment is due. But alright, I feel generous. It's been a century since I made my last deal. So you know what? I'll make you a good one. Your body and soul get to stay on Earth. As long as you follow my instructions. I, I already told you. I'll, I'll, I'll do anything. I'll, I'll, I'll pay the price. All right. I accept the deal. Good. Shake on it. Your body and soul will remain on Earth. You will not go to hell on your grandfather. You will have to kill seven people. More each one of them. One of the seven deadly sins. Understood? I'm not a murderer. Darling, you already accepted the deal. You should read between the lines when you, you make a deal with a demon. Now it's too late. Have fun.
I'm gonna go check on John. I think I just heard him wake up. John, are you alright? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I just, I, I had a really weird night. I, I think I just need some rest. Yeah. Alright, man, just uh, come down whenever. We're all downstairs right now. Yeah. Hello, my hell. Gearing up for the massacre, are we? What's wrong, bud? Are you not happy to see me? Nah, re maybe regretting dancing with the devil under the pale moonlight. How? I thought I thought none of this happened. <laughs> oh, I am very much real, my friend. Which means the price you agreed to is also very real. So either you take out those seven people I told you about, or you take my hand and we take a very nice little trip to hell together. How does that sound? Hey John, we can hear you man, just come on down. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be down in a sec, all right? Yeah, don't worry about it, all right? Go to them, they're all a part of this as well. Don't you dare bring them into... Darius, can you be quiet? I'm trying to fucking concentrate here. You're up by like 20 points. Hey, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get some air, guys. I'll be right back. Oh, Johnny boy. You just don't understand. But I own you. So, like it or not, you're gonna do what I say. You're gonna kill your so-called friends. Actually, how about I give you some motivation, huh? Yo, hey man, you doing all right? Llamo a mí para hacer un trato.
Mama pajama rolled out of bed and she ran to the police station. When the papa found out, he began to shout and he started the investigation. It's against the law. It was against the law. Oh, what the mama saw. It was against the law. Who the mama looked down and spit on the ground every time my name gets mentioned. Papa said, oh, if I get that boy, I'm gonna stick him in the house of detention. Well, I'm on my way. I don't know where I'm going. I'm on my way. I'm taking my time, but I don't know where. Goodbye to Rose. It's a cool... What are you up to today? Nothing much. I'm of class later today, so. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, you doing anything else better today? I have a lot, a lot of projects to do. So. Sick, Cornell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well. Well, tell Dusty said hi for me, okay? What? Dusty, what were you doing with Rachel earlier? Dusty. Dusty, what were you talking about with Rachel today? You know I like her. What were you doing? What was that? Oh, oh, wait, hold on. Wait, wait. Don't do it again, Dusty. I mean it!
call has been forwarded to an automatic voice. Yeah, it's getting weirder too. <clears throat> I mean, it is getting weird, don't it you is. think? Well, it is. Certainly. Well, it's it's highlighted on your show. You know, you. Make sure you're okay. Why did you leave? I, I, I don't know. You, you, you told me to go home. I didn't want you to go home. I was just trying to scare you. I know. I know. I, I was going to tell you you're, that. You're 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 afraid of you. What? You 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 don't like you. What do you mean by that, Dusty? That, that that that's why you're mad at me. You, you don't you don't like you. No, I I wasn't mad at you because of that. I was mad at you because you were trying to make me look stupid in front of Rachel. No, no. Look, look, look at yourself. You act d d d different ar around me. So, so cool around everybody else, but me. Why are you telling me all of this, Dustin? Because this, that's what I see. What does it have to do with anything? I was mean to you, and I'm sorry, but... Be, 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 be real with her. D -d Don't act for her. Will you just please come home? What's going on? Hey, Tom. <laughs> why, why are you carrying all this stuff? For a project. Here. You shouldn't be carrying all this. It's too much. Here. Let me help you carry this. At least, they fill up your water bottle. Hey, I've been seeing you act really nice with us, Dan. I mean, I, I really appreciate that. It goes a long way. Yeah, he's really sweet. The other day, though, he was acting kind of weird. I, I thought I did something wrong. No, 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 no. You're, you're fine. I mean, gosh. Uh, hey. Do you want to go get some food with Dusty and I? I mean, we've had Carol before. We've actually done that project, so. I mean, the more the merrier, right? Rich, I'm sorry, but I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, Dusty, Dusty, sorry. it's okay. It's okay. But I'm sorry about the other day. Hey, why don't we all sit outside? Every time I look at you, something is all
I believe you are up for the job, smoke screen. Of course I'll take it. It'll be a piece of cake. What are you? That's a good question. It's time for your meeting, our esteemed guest. Megatron is waiting. <laughs> what does Megatron have for me? His measly alternate mode can't do anything to me. Turning into a little gun is not going to intimidate me. Ah, oh, yes. I've been expecting you. It's an honor to have you in our company. You're not Megatron. Maybe not the one you know, but you will perish all the same. <laughs> They can fly now? Sir, can we? Optimus Primer, what brings you here on this fine day? To settle the score, Megatron. Noble of you. But you don't stand a chance. The odds don't matter to me. That's just pride. <laughs> You foolish Maximal. There's nothing stopping me from taking over the world. I perfected the cloning process to create an infinite army. Perfection. But at what cost? We know what you did to those protoforms. How many times do I have to tell you? Nothing will stand in my way. Stack. dozen damn times. I don't care. He needs to be at the site tomorrow. Because I want to finish this job. 
The more we delay it, the more it's going to cost us. Whatever, man. I don't get it how it's so hard for these guys to show up to work. It's not like they have anything else going on. Great. Perfect. I'm a rolling stone all alone and lost for a life of sin. When I pass by, all the people say, there goes another boy down the lost highway, just a deck of cards and a jug of wine. And a woman's lies makes a life like mine For the day we met, I went astray I started rolling down that lost highway Come on over. Come on over. You look a little lost, friend. Yeah, I had a blowout. My phone shattered. I ain't got a spare. I'm trying to find somebody to give me a ride to a shop or something. Well, I can give you some help, but I can't take you nowhere tonight. My eyes ain't what they used to be, but I can take you somewhere in the morning. Nah, I'll just keep walking to find another house. Ah. I'm afraid there aren't a lot of houses out here for quite a bit. Come on, sit down. We can head out in the morning. Care for smoke? Nah, I don't smoke. In my experience, everyone smokes eventually some. I'm not interested. <laughs> well... At least try some of this. This is the good stuff. <coughs> Man, how do you drink that stuff? That's stronger than anything I've ever had. Oh. <laughs> oh, I've been drinking this for so long, it don't even phase me no more. You seem like you're in a real hurry to get back out on the road. You got something important waiting? I work for a company that puts in pipelines. I run different sites, kind of make sure everything flows. 
Oh well, that explains the clothes. I get it. A respectable trade. Yeah, respectable. More like hell. Long hours, bad wages, always traveling, always sleeping in a hotel. But hey, it puts money in my pocket and food on the table. Well, got any family? What about wife, kids? Yeah, I got a wife back home. No kids though, never really had time for it. But that's fine with me, it's fine with her. Well, sounds like to me you don't have time for either. What's that supposed to mean? I don't see you with any misses out here. I didn't mean nothing by it. Seems like you're a busy man with your work and all. Yeah, I get it. I was the same way when I was young. Always traveling, taking on odd jobs here and there. Never knew what the next day would bring. Found comfort in being alone. You get it, right? Well, not like that. Would I prefer to be at home? Of course. But I've got other things to worry about. I don't have time for that. What about yourself? You got a job? Any family? Well, I was never one for family either. I was a busy man, traveled all around the world. Met a lot of different kinds of people. Saw a lot of things that most people will only read about in history book. Wow, that sounds like quite the job. What'd you do? Were you a military man? <laughs> well, I guess you could say it was something like that. Well, still sounds exciting. Wish I could live like that. Well, why don't you? I'm a simple man, you know. Making money, getting by, day to day. I wish I had a better job, had a better relationship. This is just how I live. Well, if the way you're living your life is what's stopping you, why live that way? Living a fast life isn't going to get you a long life. And I want to live a long life so that I can build something for the people that come after me. In my experience, a man can spend his entire life building a mansion, but all those rooms are going to remain empty if he doesn't have anybody to live in it with him. What do you mean? Well, it seems to me like you're filling your life with things that are temporary. You're not even making time for your family, your friends, hell, even yourself. Hold on. It's not temporary things. I focus on work so I can provide for those in my life. The gardener can give a plant all the water in the world, but too much will only ground it. The plant and the gardener will only be successful if given love and care. Why do you keep answering anything with this moral shit? Just get to the damn point. All right, I will. Listen, I've met people from all walks of life. I've met men that have lived fast and died young, men that have lived slow and died old. But yeah, I've also met the opposite. Only God really knows when it's the end. You gotta live life to the fullest. Nah, not like every day is gonna be your last. That'd be foolish. But instead, you gotta live a life that you're proud of. Because when death reaches out its hand to take you, you're gone. You are gone. And how are you sure of this? Son, I've seen many dying men. I've seen the look in their eyes when they look back at the people that they should have been. And most men aren't very happy with what they say. Change your mind about that smoke? I'm going
won't live forever. I'm gonna cross that river. I'm gonna catch tomorrow now. You're gonna wanna hold me just like I always told you. You're gonna miss me when I'm gone. Nobody here will ever find me, but I will always be around. Just like the songs I leave behind me, I'm gonna live forever now.
It's okay. It's okay, DC. You're the last one. You're the last one. And then it's over. It's okay. It's okay. It's almost over. <laughs> Attention all Please do not leave. Award ceremony is about to begin. And in the words of your least favorite teacher, the bell does not dismiss you, I do. If you take it personal, that's okay. Watch, this is so fun to see. Oh, despicable me. Why ask why better yet? Why How are those films, guys? Are you marking X on that spot? Minion, do you have anything you wanted to add to that? Banana. Minion reference, guys. Ha ha ha, yeah. Whatever. Anyway. Um, In a second, we're about to have the Audience Choice Award QR code yeah. come up on the screen. If you guys could just fill that out. Whoever wins does win a prize. Uh, yeah. Also, we were, were told to remind you that there is food out in the lobby now. But uh, to wait. But to wait until yeah. Yeah, yeah. the awards have been given out. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. We'll give you a couple minutes to, uh, to fill it out. There it is. Cool. You, look, hey, look, guys. I got a trick for you, though. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. And the crowd went wild. <laughs> Thank you. Whew, they're focused. They're focused. It's fine. If anyone feels like she's just shouting out their favorite film, we'd love to hear them. Star Wars. Yeah, I thought it was really cool that Star Wars let us film their thing here. Yeah, show the thing. We got Transformers, though. We might not have got Star Wars. We got Transformers. We did. Yeah. 
Everyone, make sure you are voting. This is a very important award for us. Before we forget, if anyone does want pictures with Rue and Minion, we will be available after the show. Audience voting will conclude in one minute. Please get your votes in. Please get your votes in. Attention, attention, attention. Awards are about to start. Before we start, though, we'd like to introduce Alana to come on up here as she will be giving out the Screenplay Award. Hello, everybody. We really hope that you guys enjoyed all of the films. Um, today, I will be presenting the Best Screenplay Awards. Um, we had about 20 submissions, and we had a group of people to read them. And today, I will be presenting the top three. So, the first one, this is third. Oh, I'm getting all three? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I was told I was just doing this today. So, in third place, we have Colin Oh, in second place, sorry, we have Colin McNeil, The Kingdom. Okay, Colin, you will get that later. Okay, and, oh, I did it backwards, y'all. I'm so sorry. Uh, in third place, we have Logan Talbot for The Christmas Eve Massacre. <laughs> Keep it going. 
All righty, and our winner for best screenplay is Gabby Stanfield for In 10 Years Time. Here you go. Oh my Here you go. Thank you. Now, Gabby, don't leave yet. So we have a question for Gabby, and Gabby, your question is, what inspired you to write this script? Okay, oh my God, okay. Um, so this is actually a true story about me and my grandma. If you didn't read, or you probably didn't because it wasn't anywhere, but it's on our website now. Um, but 10 Years Time is about a grandmother and a granddaughter basically having a conversation about um, the love of her life. And, oh my God, sorry. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was inspired by my grandma. She sat me down and like told me the story about the love of her life. And so I made a screenplay for it for Professor Springfellow's advanced screenwriting class. Um, so yeah, that was my inspiration. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All righty, and like Gabby said, all three screenplays will be available on our website for you guys to read for yourselves. Next, I am going to introduce Julian, and Gabby's gonna come back up here to present the rest of the awards. Guys, this is Calvin. He wanted to present the award for best sound, so. Calvin's gonna do that for us. Here, take the wiper. Oh, okay. 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 Also, I want to thank Alana again. Thank you very yes, much. I dragged you. her into this. Um, all right. So we're moving right, on to best so music and sound. So oh, here. here, it's this one. Yep. That's for me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that one was for her. It was for best screenplay. She's still, still holding on to it. All right. So best sounds slash music is. All right. Tell us. Jackson Wells, Whisper. Woo! Hey, good job, Calvin. Good job, good job. Technically, he said, wah, 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 wah. He did. Oh, yes. And then award. Oh. Okay, so while, while you're here, we're gonna ask a little question. Um, so what was sort of the process like in like building that sound design and the music and whatnot? I'll let, I'll let Jet start. Right, so the sound design was um, kind of critical to the story because I, I was obsessed with this garage torture, like grungy dungeon sequence for a while and I was trying to come up with a story for why that would be happening in the first place. And I thought this idea of like the voices in your head are telling me to do it, I thought that would be pretty spooky if we could pull it off correctly. And so after we shot everything, I just went through and uh, recorded my voice and made it sound nice and jazzy and then uh, <laughs> and horrifying and uh, edited all that in. And then Jackson, I, I, when I was done with most of that, I sent it over to Jackson. Jackson drew up the score and I mean, dude's a wizard. Yeah, he pretty much covered it. Okay, so now we're going to do the award for best documentary and Sanaya Polo, a member of our class, actually um, is the sponsor for this award. So we're going to have Sanaya come up so she can hand out the award. Clap for Sanaya. Go Sanaya. Okay. All right. I'm kind of nervous. All right. So the award for best documentary goes to Sydney Carter for The Printmaker. escaping question. You're still getting a question. All right. Um, so 
tell me about what inspired you to make this documentary and the process of making it. Yeah. Um, so I made this documentary for a film and production class with Rodney. Um, and I was just sort of inspired by, I mean, my subject, Anya Kanar. Um, who's been one of my favorite professors in the art department. Um, she has this wonderful ability to just connect with her students and like open you up emotionally as an artist. So I had like no plan really about what to talk about going in with her, but then I discovered her upcoming gallery show and that sort of just evolved into like an open conversation between like friends and mm -hmm. so that's sort of how I thought about it. That's really wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and our next award is for best editing, and Sanaya will also be presenting this award as a sponsor. Yeah, thanks for taking out your money out of their wallet. <laughs> Daddy's money. Um, sorry. <laughs> okay, the award for best editing goes to. Ella Davis and Emma Guzman, Girls on Film. So what would you describe as like your editing style and how that plays into the theme of girls on film? Um, I really wanted it to be um, almost kind of choppy and overwhelming and kind of down your throat and in your face um, <laughs> to kind of uh, really push that envelope and push that message and the theme. Um, I was very disappointed by the original music video and I thought it could be done so much better with a little bit more va va voom. Yeah, mm -hmm. some oomph. <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sanaya. Thank you, Sanaya. Okay, so our next award is going to be for Best Acting. So we're going to have a UNCC Film Club representative come up to present that, as they are the sponsor for that. Thank you for coming up, Jackson Wells. Here you go. You know that guy. It's me. All right. All right. Uh, best actress goes to Tito Holder. Nice guys finish last. Um, you guys, the reason why I look so awkward right now is because Tito is not here tonight, so we are accepting this in his honor. I was the cinematographer slash second AD, and this right here is Kawan. He was the AD for this amazing production, and um, yeah, in, in his honor, we were taking this award, and we're going to find Tito, but um, we talked to him. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna find Tito hopefully, but yeah, I know I know that he really appreciates this man and, and all those photos. I need all those photos because I know he's gonna be really happy. Thank y'all. But that's all I got. That's it. All right, so the next award we're gonna present is for Best Cinematography. And we're also gonna have another film club representative come up, Luis Rivera, to present that. Uh, yeah, I can see it though. Yeah, I can see it though. Okay. I have eyes. <laughs> there you go. Hi. Thank you, hi. Hey everyone, how's everyone doing tonight? There's a lot of great films tonight. I am very honored to be able to present this for the UNCC Film Club here at UNC Charlotte. Uh, we're a place for a bunch of filmmakers, uh, aspiring filmmakers, no matter your experience level. We all come together and work together to better ourselves and to someday maybe be in the filmmaking world. Uh, if you're interested to see our work, well, 10 out of the 18 films here tonight included film club members. So. 
You've already seen it? So if you like their work, please feel free to come by. We got two more meetings this semester, a couple more next semester. So feel free to stop on by, right? But now that I've done with self-promotion, <laughs> best cinematography goes to Jackson Wells, Turnpike. <laughs> Has your name on it? Yeah, it does. Has your name on it. So, what is your advice for someone who wants to get into filmmaking but has no experience doing so? Just go out and make something. I feel like you gotta screw up a lot in order to get good. It took me a long time to make something that I was like truly proud of. So, my advice is just to shoot your shit. <laughs> really, <laughs> that would be it. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so our second to last award is going to be for audience favorite. So who was y'all's favorite? Okay. All right. And our sponsor is going to go ahead and be Suzy Films. We have uh, Jordan Snyder here to present that award for us. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having us. We are also UNC Charlotte grads and also grads of Rodney Stringfellow University. So. Um, thanks for having us, and congratulations to all of you on some great films. The winner of the Audience Award is The Christmas Eve Massacre. You don't escape the question either. <laughs> All right. So can you tell me about sort of the process of sort of making this kind of uh, aesthetic for your film, like of this very uh, mobster-esque uh, cinema? Yeah, so we had talked about doing something like black and white style, 50 style for like a while. And um, we always enjoy the mobster movies like The Godfather, Goodfellas. So we thought we would just put our own goofy, bizarre spin on that. So yeah. Definitely succeeded. <laughs> okay, and our last film for the night is going to be Best Film. So we have John Allred here from Wheelhouse Media to present that. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> Professor Stringfellow. Bring it up for everyone's favorite professor, Rodney Stringfellow. Okay, and so this is the award for best film. And just so that you are aware, um, he's uh, Wheelhouse Media, who we love. They are sponsoring this award, and it comes with a $500 prize. And he gave me cash. So the winner for best film at the UNC Charlotte 2024 Gold Reel Film Festival is... Sydney Carmer, the printmaker. Oh, and there's that. <laughs> A lot of cash. Just in the pocket. You better make sure that isn't counterfeit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you can pay for your parking now. <laughs> you can pay for everyone's parking. <laughs> um, art school is expensive, so. Right, right. Art is very expensive. Um, since we've already asked you a question, 
Um, is there any other comment you would like to make about sort of process of this? Shout out to your professor, any kind of like love you would like to spread or hate, valid. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of pressure. Um, <laughs> obviously, big thank you to Rodney because I mean, without his class, I probably wouldn't have made it. I usually make more silly things. And so when we were given a documentary assignment, my immediate question was, can I make a mockumentary? <laughs> but um, being forced to make something more serious was a great opportunity for me to be a little more vulnerable with my work, um, which is something that is kind of difficult to do sometimes, just putting yourself out there. So I appreciate that. Honestly, that was perfect, so thank you. Okay, before I give it back over to Addison and Ethan to wrap things up, I just want to let you guys know you can re-watch the live stream of these films or tell anybody else to watch it on Film Club's YouTube. Uh, so just search that up and this will be available to watch. And then one more thing, um, Professor Stringfellow, we have a little something for you. Yeah. <laughs> so we didn't have time to get a real gift, so... <laughs> Don't tell him that. A little program. So we have a little program with all our names and a little note on the back. Not for y'all to read. Not to read. But for you. Thank you for everything. Thank you. You're amazing. I just have to say, this has been... And first... Oh, I just... Oh, okay. That's okay. Okay, it goes right back on. This has been the most amazing... Every year it gets better, and this is no exception. This has been an amazing film festival. I could not be more proud of all of you, so thank you. We love you. We love you. All right. I'm going to give it back over to Gru and maybe Kevin and see what they have to say. Before oh. you guys leave, we're going to put up a QR code, and I just, we just want you to tell us how we did. Mm -hmm. No pressure, we did amazing, I know. So yeah. please, please. No negative positive. feedback, it, actually. Yeah, please, yeah, thank you. We, we, we don't like that around here. No. But thank you guys so much for coming out. It's so dope. Hope you guys had a great time. And yes, the free food is here. And it is. But please fill out that form first. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you.